amigos de TechCetera, hoy estamos con Benjamin Silva. Él se va a presentar, he's going to introduce himself and he's going to tell us what is his role in Huawei. Okay, go ahead. My name is Benjamin Silva, I'm the Chief Digital Officer for Video Strategy and Operations for Latin America. Um, that's my title. Uh, what I really do is help telecommunications companies um, deal with media, gaming, metaverse, um, how to reach the subscriber base, giving them the type of media and content that they want um, so that you know, the subscribers can be happy and the carriers. Okay, so Benjamin, uh, it looks like uh, you get to do a lot of interesting stuff. So tell us some examples of what you have done so far. Uh, well, I mean, I do speak last, last year um, we did a really fascinating thing for Telecom Argentina where we did the very first motion capture over 5G um, controlling a 3D animated gaming character that we could do in real time. Wow. So, yeah, so the idea is to say that the gaming industry to really, to really prove that you'll be able to enter the game as yourself with no game controller, run through the game as if it's really... So, you don't need any kind of interface. No. It's your body, your and body. that's it. Yes. Oh. So, seven millisecond delay, which is better than you can get playing mobile or actually get playing online. So, with seven millisecond delay. Sounds really nice. And can you tell us the relationship that, that the, it's between a met metaverse and all the things that you do with a web 3.0? Sure. So, right now, if you would ask me that question a year ago, I would say this is uh, two or three years away. Yeah. If you ask me this question now, I tell you it's it, here right now. It's now. It's right exactly. now. Exactly. So, all of the telecoms are all asking me now, Ben, we have to have a metaverse strategy. So, I think a lot of them saw what happened with Ifland in Korea. And Ifland is a. Uh, SKT is always having a battle between Korea Telecom and LG Plus. Yeah. But they launched their own metaverse. And when they did, their subscriber base grew, their revenue grew, their, their hosting grew, but more importantly, their subscriber base is thrilled. And so now all the carriers are like, I know I had to do metaverse. One, what is the metaverse? And two, well, how is it going to affect you know my subscribers and the people that are born? So now it's about educating them on what to do, right? So between AR, VR, and metaverse, and whether to build their own metaverse or to connect to other metaverse, understanding how people get on to the metaverse. So it is most definitely happening right now. It's not It's not a future, it's a now. Okay, so for most of the people, it's not easy to understand what is their relationship between AI, 5G, Wi-Fi 7, and the metaverse. So, in the metaverse requires low latency, right? Because we're in a 360 degree environment, with many 3D objects, a lot of texturing, and every time you move your head, the entire scene has to move with you. As you move through the scene, the scene has to move with you. In order for that to feel real, you need low latency for that to happen. And the higher the, the graphic resolution, the more bandwidth we need. So if you want a really true, completely immersive experience in the metaverse, it had to be 4K or beyond. 4K or beyond requires big bandwidth, and requires low latency, which is where 4G, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7 come into play, because we have low latency and high bandwidth capability. But we also have to take into consideration the masses, right? Does that mean that everybody that's you know on 4G or hasn't got there yet can't experience the metaverse? The reality is, it's not true. I mean, Liverpool and Mexico launched um, AR, um, you know, Telecom Argentina, I mean, Claro. All of them are launching AR type of activation events um, to help promote 5G. But it doesn't mean that you can only see it on 5G. It just means that your interactive level is different. But 5G is the marriage where Metaverse can really truly come to life is with 5G. Okay, and uh, we have seen a lot of big characters saying that the, the Metaverse is now and uh, the AI is building the Metaverse. Is that a reality? Are we there yet or not? I wouldn't say that the AI is building the metaverse. I would say that people are using the AI in ways to help facilitate building the metaverse. I think, you know, AI is a, is a tremendous tool. That combination of AI and machine learning is great. 
Um, last year, Victoria did a live concert, for example, with the three biggest stars of Mexico and the three biggest stars of Mexico that are no longer alive. Now, they used AI and machine learning, but they still had to marry all of that together in order for them to interact with the live characters on stage in real time. When we talk about the metaverse, the use of AI, especially for for, for building up content, for building up environments, for building up that interactivity, no problem. But the way that the construct of the metaverse is being done now, it still requires humans. So I think we're, we're a few years away before AI takes over. Okay, most of us, we are clueless about what Huawei is doing with, around the metaverse. What's the contribution? Well, right now our contribution is, is showing our carriers how to have a, a metaverse strategy, right? Because they all want it. I mean, they came back to Mobile World Congress saying, we have to have metaverse, we have to have metaverse. Our first job is to educate them what is the metaverse. The second is, what's your strategy for the metaverse? And the third is, is your network capable of delivering a metaverse experience that's going to be great? So right now, that's the phase that we're in now. So right now, I'm really designing metaverse strategy for the carriers. So because metaverse is a really big and vast, vast end, and you can't bite it all off at once. So do you have your own metaverse, or do you build on somebody else's existing metaverse? Um, what's the highway or the way people are going to get into metaverse? How are we going to connect to the other metaverses? Um, what are we going to do for social media on the metaverses? Or is it going to be ours, or are we going to wait for somebody else to build it? Um, so this is, uh, do we build it, or do we take advantage of what's already built? And my fear, or my belief, okay. is I saw what Ifland did, and they built their own metaverse. Because if we let the big giants, the social media giants, and they build all the metaverse, then it's going to be similar to where we are today. Yeah, it's going to be way, Web 2.0. There's not going to be the democratizing in there. No. And, and I think it's going to stifle the creativity, because they're going to want it to work within their confines. And I think the metaverse has to be free. I subscribe to the Oasis theory, which is Ready Player One, that says the Oasis we go to, I can go anywhere and be holding to no entity, right? So I, I worry more because Facebook coined the name Meta, which to me was like, you're taking advantage of the 20 years of work yeah, that's been Actually, before. it's multiverse, but Meta, it has a, a different meaning right now. <laughs> But I think it was unfair, to be honest. It's like, oh, you're acting like you did this when this came long before you. But they always do that. Yeah, this is also true. <laughs> so it's not surprising. No, it's not. It was annoying, but not surprising. So, okay. And most of us, we have like a lot of questions about the opportunities for developing countries in the metaverse. Yeah, so, you know, some of the best developers game developers, meta developers, everyone. Here's my, here's my fear. Right now, Canada is grabbing all the greatest programmers, animators, and all these guys and bringing them to Canada. And then they're going to charge for all this stuff back to the Latin America and the rest of the world. And there's so much great talent here already. And I think that the governments should really start to think about having programs to start to teach our young people here so that they can develop businesses here, get investment here, so that the money that the metaverse generates stays here. Instead of going all the way up to Silicon Valley and then we end up paying all the money to them as opposed to being built here and financed here and monetized here. And I think that needs to happen. So I think the problem is, is at the higher level, people don't understand what the metaverse is. When people don't understand it, they put it over here. The problem is the metaverse is here now. It's not going anywhere. It's going to drive a lot of what happens here. So, not just for young people, but even for old people. So, let me give you a, an example. Sure. My father is 87 years old. Okay? Um, and at Christmas time, he came to my home and put on a quest. Right? So, and he was amazed at what he could do. So, he went home and he bought his own. Wow. And every day he would call me on the phone. Ah, I climbed Mount Everest today. I went here. I went to my old neighborhood. I went to the whole country. I went kayaking in the Arctic. I was every day these adventures. And I have seven uncles, ranging from 87 to 95 years old. They all have quests. 
Now they play golf every single day today. They go on trips all over the world and laugh and joke as if they're 20 years old again. And so their whole life has been enriched because of this. And so it's not just for young people. The old people that are now closed in and that lack of content that older people are having, now they can socialize with other people. More importantly, all the places they dreamed about going and feel like they're never going to get a chance, that changes. So, so in that sense, how can like a regular people that it's that it's willing to have new experience get to contribute and get funded in order to develop for the metaverse? Ah, so metaverse is so big. You think about when the internet started. So many entities out there opened massive opportunities for e-commerce, for web development um, across the board. Hundreds of thousands, of, hundreds of millions of new jobs. Are open. The metaverse is actually more and more. So all the content creators, all the programmers, people who understand AI, to get involved in the AI, all of those that are actually real estate, all of that's all going to be combined into one new digital generation and hundreds of millions of new jobs. Funding right now is happening at an all-time high and in two places. Before we just you could go public or you could get seed money and angel yeah. money from you know from from all the angel investors in Silicon Valley and all the different countries have small groups. Well, that changed when we start talking about cryptocurrency because now they have their own angel investment funds. They have their own going public on cryptocurrency, and so getting a five billion dollars to 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 incubate something that's going to be metaverse related, not so complicated. And because cryptocurrency is truly global, they're looking to invest the money more globally and not be centralized in any U.S. or any of the bigger countries. They're looking for the other developed countries or Latin America, Asia, Pacific, and the rest to do the funding so that they get first rank of these things. So that landscape has changed as well. So I just watched a company get $5 million based on their idea for the metaverse. It's actually a really good idea. Two young guys from Peru. And they got $5 million. And I see this happening more and more and more because of that whole new domain. So a whole new breed of, 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 whole new breed of, of a way to do business, a whole new breed of, of entrepreneurs and young people wanting to, to, to capitalize on the metaverse, and a whole new way of getting them funded. So to me, that's encouraging. Okay, so 5G is not required, but it's needed. <laughs> And we don't have 5G around here. So how do we pretty much contribute and how do we get to enjoy the metaverse? Yeah, that's it. I mean, so a lot of people are enjoying the AR part of the metaverse now. And that's starting to come here into Colombia and a lot of countries too. Right now, VR goggles is, is maybe one third of the market. Then VR um, without goggles takes up the next third. But the next you know, large amount is actually in AR. AR is much bigger than both. So, and if you're downloading AR apps, you don't need to have 5G. Right? But if you want to really truly get into the interactive, socialized version and of wireless. That, and wireless. <laughs> yes, you'll need to have 5G, you'll have to have Wi Fi 6 going to Wi Fi 7, you'll need to have fiber to the home, and all of those things are going to become necessary. But you know what? I mean, when the internet first started, Everyone said, how are people going to do this? And we went from dial-up and eventually it happens. I mean, the demand drives it. What's interesting is I always watch what happens in, in Korea because it's a microcosm of the world. They were the first to reach 65% broadband penetration. They were the first one to reach penetration on gaming. They're leading on for metaverse. And I always notice that it's the kids, the millennials and the younger ones that are driving their parents by saying, I have to have this, I have to have this. The difference is, all of those things back then didn't move the needle for the parents. The parents didn't care. But now, the parents and the older people are also going to be able to take advantage of that metaverse as well, like my father. Okay. So they will start to drive this as well. And that will happen here, like it's happening every day. So. so remember, guys, the future is now and the metaverse is here. Thank you, Ben. Hi, my pleasure.